Let's move on to defenders in the scouting report. West Ham need centre-backs. Albonna is our best centre-back, and although he's getting better with age, he is 33 years old and is entering the last year of his contract. And if you have common sense and you want to be a well-run football club, you think to the future. That's why we need to get young centre-backs into the club. I know we've got Frederick Alves, but we still need a few more for depth purposes. So that's why in this version of Scouting Report, I'm going to be talking about centre-backs. In this episode of Scouting Report, I'm going to be looking at some centre-back targets that I have been looking at myself. I'm going to give my thoughts on them, an assessment, and then I'm going to give two targets that I would go for. In the goalkeeping and the left back report, I gave one target. I think we need two if we're going to have some more depth because we will need centre backs to play twice a week and have to mix and match because of the Europa League. That's just going to be common for every single position anyway, hence why we need depth. I'm going to say it a few times. Um, so I've got five centre back targets here that I'm going to go through, talk about, and give my thoughts. And then I'm going to go for the two that I would pick personally and talk about them as to why I'd sign them. I'll start off with John Brooks, a 28-year-old American-German centre-back who plays for Wolfsburg. He was born in Germany to an American father who was serving in the military at the time. And although Brooks has the state of Illinois tattooed on his arm, he's never actually lived in the United States before. That said, he does represent the US men's national team at international level and is raved about in the States. The US national team is growing right now because of the talent levels. They already have players like Landon Donovan, Tim Howard in the past, but this is like the new wave. John Brooks is a part of that alongside players such as Christian Pulisic, Josh Sargent, Daryl DK. Brooks is a starting centre-back for the US national team. And he's a very tough and physical defender who works well with Tim Ream. He's part of a growing USA team, like I've said. Uh, he's tall and powerful. And he's very agile as well. He doesn't tend to go down very easily. And when he does go down, he gets back up straight up again. Um, he's very competent at what he does, basically. And the US national team is growing with him as a part of the puzzle. So that's why he gets to be one of my centre-back scouting choices because he's growing as a player nationally he's getting attention in the birth country of his father and not only that he's also quite a reliable centre-back here's a player that's kind of been linked with West Ham before Mark Gahi who is English 20 years old and plays for Chelsea's Academy although he did spend last season on loan at Swansea City uh, when he was at Swansea City, he received rave reviews. He was already considered a future Chelsea player and a future Chelsea starter at the time of his loaning out. But he really shone for Swansea as they uh, tried to pursue a playoff push. He is a very tight marker on players and he bullies players. He bullies any opposition player who has the ball and gets the ball off of them. Uh, he's quick to react into a variety of situations and he's really good at keeping his eye on the ball so he's got really good vision he plays as either a center back or a defensive midfielder um, I think that would be a win-win if West Ham were to sign him because he'd be able to play either center back or defensive mid and easily transition between the roles depending on the formation but he's young he can do two different roles, and that's something that David Moyes, I think, is going to look for. A player who can do more than just one role and contribute a lot more than it says on the tin. Zach Viner is up next. He's played 43 games last season for Bristol City, and he had two goals. He's 24 years old. He's started to mould himself into a decent centre-back at Bristol City, although he did go out on loan a few times before then. Um, this was really his first major season in the championship, but he had a really good season. He's an intelligent defender, and he's always aiming to improve. So given that he's only young and, like I say, 24 years old, he can grow. The Premier League is a good place for him, but it might be a bit too big of a jump for him right now. 
Not saying that he should be scouted. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm saying the Premier League's a bit of a big jump for him right now early on in his career. Maybe give him one more season in the Championship and then see what comes out of it. But his intelligence is what makes him a very good defender. The fact that he can read a play and that he knows what to do and has a bit of a commonsensical approach to the game. Harry Souter is linked with a move to a few Premier League clubs, one of them being West Ham. He has a very strong footballing background as his dad played football in Scotland and his brother plays for Hearts of Midlothian. His brother's called John Souter. He was born to a Scottish father and Australian mother and chooses to represent Australia at international level. Internationally, he's on quite a bit of a scoring streak. He's had three goals in the last five games for Australia as it tries to uh, get into the World Cup. Um, he's a starter for Australia internationally, of course. And in the Championship, he's started to embrace a competitive nature because I would argue the Championship is a lot harder than the Premier League. It's hard to get out of, but it's even harder to compete in, not at least because there are more teams, or 24 teams, bear in mind. The competitive spirit of the Championship has made so to grow rapidly, but I don't think he's really realised the change himself until more recently. He's matured, uh, he's got regular game time as a result, and he's put in some consistently good performances for Stoke. He can do it on a cold night in Stoke, and he plays for Stoke, so obviously he can do it on a cold night in Stoke. Can he do it in the Premier League? It remains to be seen. But he's definitely a player that needs to be looked at, because he's got that competitive nature and hunger about him. You may not have heard of Pablo Ramon, so let me explain who he is. He's Spanish, 19 years old, and he plays for Real Madrid's academy. He's gone out on loan a few times in Spain, and has struggled to find any regular playing time at Real Madrid, because, uh, while well, he's young and he just hasn't impressed any Real Madrid manager in the time that he's been there. But he's been a Real Madrid in the academy system for quite some time now. He absolutely blew me away when I watched him. He's blown me away with some of his playing style. He's got a wide range of defensive skill and ability. And not only does he just get the ball clear, does he just do his basic defensive job of get it out of the way. He can head accurately... And he stays close to his defenders to have a collective joint effort with them. Um, he, li he likes to be interdependent with other defenders on his team. And just works well together that way. He works well as a team player. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos is quite a fast defender. Ramon's quite a fast defender. Both he and Ramos have one thing in common. It's the dribbling ability going forward. And it's quite pacey. Another good trait that Pablo Ramon has is he's a good interceptor of the ball. And he likes to nullify an attack and a move, often at the last minute, but as long as he gets it away from the goal, he doesn't really care. If he has to hoof it away, doesn't care. Intercept it, doesn't care. He just gets the job done. That's why I like him. So, who am I going for? I'll tell you who I'm going for. I'm going for Mark Gahi and Pablo Ramon. Gahi and Ramon on loan deals. Maybe Gahi with option to buy, and Ramon on loan with option to buy as well, but I don't think Ramon would stay in England for now. The reason I'm going for Gahi is because he can play defensive mid and centre back, so he can play two roles. Um, that's something that's an added bonus to the team, and it's kind of convenient. Say if we either one of Rice or Suchek go down, we can put Gahi in quite comfortably. Um, he impressed press me for Swansea City. He's evidenced that a loan deal can benefit a player. It's benefited him for sure. Pablo Ramon, because he's got a wide range of defensive skills. He's young. He's quick to learn new things. And also the fact that he can dribble from the back. I don't really think West Ham have any defenders that can run for long distance and dribble it out. Maybe the closest one we've got is Diop, in all fairness. But Ramon can go even further and get it from, say, centre-back to around the attacking midfield zone if he has to. can even go down the wing as well. So him dribbling from the back is an extra asset. So yeah, he and Ramon both add defensive and offensive traits, respectively, to a team. And that's why I'd have them at West Ham. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Scouting Report. A link to all of the players will be in the bio if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content the next episode of scouting report is going to be talking about midfielders and i got two targets for that as well because i can't pick between two it's an either or kind of situation thank you very much for watching and if you want to find out who midfield targets are watch the next episode of scouting report take care and i'll see you all soon